Coming up on the Q30 newscast, snow, snow, and more snow. We'll take a look at the effect it's having on the Quinnipiac campus. Plus, a 19-year-old woman says she's killed more than 22 people she met online. The news starts now. Live from the Ed McMahon Center, this is the Q30 News Nightcast. Good afternoon, Quinnipiac, and welcome to the Q30 Newscast. I'm Mark Spillane, and here to the deliver the news with me is my partner in crime, John Alba. Thanks, Mark. Let's get underway. More than three inches of snow fell on the Quinnipiac campus on Tuesday, and students were in class to see it all. The university chose not to cancel class after two snow days in the past two weeks. Our Giovanni Mio spoke with Quinnipiac students who were upset by the decision. Students at Quinnipiac are upset the university is not closed today despite the inclement weather. These students are voicing their opinions online, mainly questioning Q's decision. Quinnipiac canceled classes multiple times last week due to the same weather conditions. I think it's a pain in the neck for commuters driving in this weather. Um, you know, even people from Rock Hill taking shuttles, like who knows what can happen. I understand where they're coming from because they've had to cancel classes a couple times the past few weeks, so they're trying not to cancel too, too much, so they tried to get through this one as, as uh, smoothly as possible. But I definitely think that they should have today. Multiple students have said they experienced near-death experiences on the shuttles while commuters struggled to drive to the university. And with school almost being done for today, is it too late to consider canceling the rest of classes? Associate Vice President of Public Relations John Morgan tells News Team 30 the university has no plans to close anytime soon. It's not snowing right now, so I think at this time, just you know, keep moving forward, keep plowing it. Um, you know, get the roads clean as much as possible. I definitely think that they should keep the classes open. They're already halfway through the day. Uh, there isn't any more th that should be coming down in the forecast, so I think they should just deal with it and uh, definitely just keep classes on. Giovanni Mio, Q30 News. Quinnipiac will introduce a new Master of Science in Business Analytics program in the fall of 2014. Associate Dean for Graduate Programs for the School of Business Sean McTiernan said, quote, The new program in business analytics will fill a genuine need for well-trained individuals with the skills required to manage large amounts of data and leverage it for organizational success, end quote. The 33-credit program has been approved by the state of Connecticut and will be offered online featuring seven core courses and four electives. Quinnipiac students will often lose their cue cards, but the cue card office is launching a new program that may help them out. Taylor Popolars has more. If you're a student at Quinnipiac, you have a cue card. Along with your cue card, you most likely have a smartphone. Ever thought of combining the two? Well, officials at Quinnipiac's cue card office have done just that. We were chosen as one of the two schools in the nation to work with uh, Blackboard on, on a pilot that they're doing. So what, what it does is it actually replicates the cue card, um, and it does all the same functionality that your cue card does when you tap it, um, except it's all natively embedded within the phone. Since launching in November, more than a dozen students have connected their smartphone to their cue card. The catch? You must have a Samsung Galaxy or HTC smartphone to participate, and many Quinnipiac students have another popular phone. While the general consensus seems to be that the pilot program is a great idea, students with Apple products are a little disappointed that they can't tap in with their phone. I think that's a pretty cool innovation. Uh, I don't have a Samsung, but uh, if I did, I'm definitely not going to lose my key, uh, definitely not going to lose my phone, but I might lose my cue card. So. Hey, if they start giving out Samsung and HTC phones, I'll be really happy. I mean, I have an Apple right now, but as of right now, I think that's pretty cool. Hopefully they get the equipment to put it on the Apple phone, and that'll make me really happy. According to Wait, it's not that the program is ignoring iPhone users. The technology just isn't available yet. The actual hardware, the, the iPhone itself, um, does not have NFC, the NFC capability built into it. But for now, Wait says the students involved in the program are enjoying it. They like the, the convenience of it. They have their phone in their hand all the time. Um, and sometimes, or most of the time, it's a lot easier for them to know where that is than it is for them to know where their cue card is. And looking ahead, Waite says it could be possible that college ID cards become a thing of the past. The one card was meant to be this one thing that you need to do everything on campus. Now if we can build that into the one thing you need to do everything else in your life, um, I think it's a really good marriage. Taylor Popolars, Q30 News. Well, Mark, you and I take our college food very seriously, and it's one of the best or worst parts about attending school for many students. Hamden has its own share of popular food joints, and there's a new one becoming popular with Quinnipiac students. But it's not just the food that's unique, it's the owner as well. 
You don't have to look hard to find a deli establishment in Hamden, but if you don't pay attention, you may glance over one of Whitney Avenue's newest delicacies, BND Deli Works. I th I've had a lot of customers come in and they're just very um, pleased with how they, you know, are greeted and how they're treated when they are here. BND was opened in August by Amy Bravo just minutes from the Quinnipiac campus. She makes a 25 minute drive from Ansonia every day and spend several hours preparing breakfast and lunch. I get here usually a little after five, and typically I don't leave until, you know, we close at 2.30, but, you know, usually at least an hour or longer after that. Bravo closes earlier than most other shops because she has another job. She's a mother of two boys. Benjamin and Daniel are who the restaurant is named after. To be able to go home and have an evening with the boys, with my husband, um, that's just more a personal choice. B&D finds itself needing to get innovative with so many other delis in town. Bravo believes her menu's deft, though, puts it apart from the pack. I think we have a lot of variety. We have a big menu from, you know, our the soups I, that I make homemade every day, different soups, all the way to the different sandwiches, to hot dogs. I mean, there's something here for everyone. and. Um, you know, I really take pride in every dish that goes out. But a career in the deli field wasn't always in her life. Her original aspirations had her working not in the kitchen, but the classroom. I had originally gone to school for teaching, and I taught for three years and then decided that I really wanted to do something different. Bravo then opened a deli in Brantford before settling down with her husband and returning to teaching once more. But the opportunity to teach her boys a lesson proved to be too much to pass up. I wanted them to see the whole, you know, it sounds cliche, but the whole idea of, you know, do what you love and go after your dreams. In Hamden, John Alba, Q30 News. Charwells has posted a new sign in Cafe Q saying that there will be new changes for the 2014-2015 school year. The Boomer Meal Plan will increase by $150 to $950 per semester, and the Bobcat Plan will go to $1,400. The kitchen will also be open later on weeknights to accommodate students. Prices will decrease on certain items like fruit and chicken fingers as well. The sign also announced that a convenience store will be added to the York Hill campus next school year. Still to come on the Q30 newscast, new parking bans in New Haven, John. Yeah, and that's going to be something that's going to disappoint a lot of people. Plus, we'll take a look at what's happening around the globe with world news. We'll be right back. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q-Cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney, here at Ray and Mike's. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden, your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q-Cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney, here at Ray and Mike's. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. Welcome back to the Q30 Newscast. I'm John Alba. Hamden resident and Team USA men's hockey goalie Jonathan Quick has gained some culinary popularity as of late. The goalie's quick witch sandwich has been a popular item 
at Ray and Mike's Deli off Whitney Avenue. The item was created after he led his team to the Stanley Cup championship in 2012 when they defeated the New Jersey Devils four games to two. Deli owner Ray George says the steak and cheese and mac and cheese sandwich has been given the seal of approval by Quick himself. Metro North has been facing issues such as a power outage and a deadly derailment in recent months. The company held a forum to get commuter feedback. The special forum was paneled by railroad officials and Connecticut DOT Commissioner Jim Redeker. Many commuters, commuters came to, the vo to voice their opinions about Metro North service, calling it, quote, deplorable, end quote. The National Transportation Safety Board recommended improvements that included recorders on the trains and speed limit signs. Plus, there's also issues for commuters who don't take the train, John, and it's a new parking ban in New Haven. The Department of Public Works has been clearing frozen solid snowbanks from city streets and side roads, and the city has put a week-long parking ban into effect to help speed up the clearing process. The emergency order will force residents to park on the even-numbered side of the street only. The ban started Monday morning at 9 a.m. and will remain in effect until Sunday at 3 p.m. A Pennsylvania woman claims to be a serial killer. 19-year-old Miranda Barber says that she has killed more than 22 people, a claim that state police are taking seriously. Barber is on trial alongside her newly wed husband for killing a man they met on Craigslist who was looking for sex. She confessed to the murder and says that she only killed, quote, bad people, end quote. Police are attempting to locate at least 30 other men who they believe Barber contacted on Craigslist. And Mark, you know, the Olympics, they are well underway, and it's a time when all countries are supposed to come together in peacetime, but unfortunately, that's not necessarily the case. No, it's not. Nikki DeRico is here to have more on the world news. Hi, I'm Nikki DeRico with your weekly world news. 14 people are dead, including six police officers, after a protest in Kiev, Ukraine turned violent Tuesday night after clashes erupted with police officials. These protests come after months of debating whether the Ukraine should become an economic ally with Russia. Protesters set parts of the city on fire, coating Kiev with black smoke. Explosions and barricades were also used to resist police forces. Officials say 47 police officers who favor the European pact are injured after clashing with these protesters. Kiev City Hall officials urge residents to stay clear of the city center to avoid any more casualties. Stick with Q30 News for more updates on this developing story. Venezuelan opposition leader Leopoldo Lopez turned himself in to National Guard troops on Monday. Lopez led protesters for higher security to end scarcities and protect freedom of, spe of speech in Venezuela. These protesters already led three anti-government protesters and one government supporter dead. Government officials say Lopez is accused of conspiracy, murder, plotting to destabilize the economy, and overthrow the president. North Korea was also under fire this week when evidence leaked linking the country to crimes against humanity on Monday. A United Nations panel reported a list of abuse and torture acts that were employed by Kim Jong-un and other North Korean leaders. The commission also said it would refer the results to the international criminal court system for possible prosecution. A warning letter was sent to Kim Jong-un saying he could possibly face prosecution for these crimes against humanity. That's all for me. Now back to the desk. Well, thanks so much, Nikki. And coming up on the Q30 newscast, it has been a winter wonderland in hand. And Liv Dufault will tell us if more snow is on its way. And once we find out if we'll be stuck inside watching television, we'll get an update from Sarah Fidel and Isabella Roman on everything entertainment related. As long as they're watching Q30, that's fine with me. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney, here at Ray and Mike's. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. 
come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. Welcome back to the Q30 Newscast. That's Mark Spillane. I'm John Alba. And Mark, it's been a long winter here in Hamden. It sure has. It's been so cold that even Jim Cantori felt the need to stop well, by. Well, we'll go over to our resident Cantori, Liv Dufault, with the weather. Liv, what's ahead? Thank you, gentlemen. It has been a winter wonderland uh, this past couple of months, but lucky for us, we're going to get a little bit warmer in the upcoming week, except then probably next week we'll go back to snow. Quinnipiac students should be careful today. It is incredibly slippery outside, so you could probably wear your ice skates and ice skate to class, so everyone be careful. You do not want to be the one to fall down on the quad. As you can see, taking a look at our national weather, up here in the Boston area, it is 34 degrees, so it's still pretty cold here on the East Coast. However, down here in Florida, it is 79 degrees in Orlando and 79 degrees in Miami, so maybe they should send some warmth up to here, guys. And now, if we take a look over on the West Coast, over in California, it is 57 degrees in Los Angeles and 57 degrees in San Francisco. So it's a little bit milder, but I would not mind that type of weather up here after the cold that we've been having. So if we move on to our local weather, as you can see in Waterbury, it's still very, very cold, 33, it's freezing. But over in New London, it's warming up at 40 degrees. So hopefully that'll come over to us. Over in New Haven, it's 38 degrees, so also a bit warmer. But in the north, such as in Hartford, it's 31 degrees, so still very freezing. Now let's take a look at our radar. Looking at our radar, as you can see, we had a lot of freezing rain today. There's a lot of moisture, but over down in the Midwest, it's pretty dry. So hopefully for the next couple days, we'll move away from the front and we'll have some dry weather. Now moving on to tonight's forecast. It, it will be 28 degrees tonight and it's going to be much clearer later with winds at 13 miles per hour going west. However, all Quinnipiac students should bundle up because it's going to be very cold. And now uh, for tomorrow's weather. Uh, we're, it's going to feel like a spring day to us after all of the cold that we've been having. It's going to be 43 degrees and it's going to be sunny in the morning but going to get a little bit cloudy later with winds moving southwest at 7 miles per hour. And now let's take a look at our 7 day forecast. So upcoming, as you can see, it's going to be 43 degrees tomorrow, so a little bit warmer than what we've been having. And on Friday, it'll get all the way up to 50 degrees, which is much warmer. So Quinnipiac students uh, can enjoy the warm weather, but not for long, because coming up this weekend, it's going to go back down 45 degrees on Saturday and 38 degrees on Sunday. And then next week, as you can see around Wednesday, we'll probably be getting some more snow and we'll go back into the very freezing temperatures. And I'm Liv Dufo. That's all for your weather. Back to the guests. Hey, thanks, Liv. And you guys can find out more about WeatherWatch 30 by visiting Q30Television.com. Mark, this weather has been absolutely ridiculous. I remember our freshman year, which was two years ago already, believe it or not, the only snowfall we got that year was on Halloween. <laughs> Halloween, and then we had Nemo last year. And this February has been equally as ridiculous as last year. Absolutely ridiculous. But it's starting to get warmer, and eventually we'll get there. And you know what warmth means, John? Concerts. Oh, have yes. you heard about Bruce Springsteen and ACDC? I think I may have heard a thing or two about them. I'm pretty excited. New albums, new tours? Excites me. I'm a big fan of both. And i got to tell you, Mark, it's been six years since ACDC last went out on the road. And I know today, or at least today, I'm more excited than I've ever been. Well, hey, you know what? Now we got our rock and roll fix, and you know we'll take a look at what's going on in the rest of the entertainment world. We bring in Sarah Fidel and Isabella Roman. Thanks, guys. This week in Hollywood, one actress makes a surprise announcement, and Netflix effects continues with its own announcement on two of its most popular shows. I'm Isabella Roman, and I'm Sarah Fidel, and here's this week's entertainment update. Ellen Page, known for her roles in Inception and Juno, has announced she is gay. 
The actress came out during her speech at the Human Rights Campaign in Los Angeles. She says she is, quote, tired of lying by omission, end quote. The actress also says she was recently inspired by football player Michael Sam and hopes she too will be able to inspire others. And two Netflix original series are making headlines this week. The second season of the Emmy awarded winning series House of Cards premiered Friday. Binge watching of the show was at an ultimate high. And didn't you hear? Orange is the new black. The Netflix hit will premiere in June. All 13 episodes will be released at once. A short teaser was already released for the second season. Jimmy Fallon began his reign on The Tonight Show on Monday night. Just hours before the show, Fallon shared a message with his fans, saying, quote, This is it. We are starting a new chapter of The Tonight Show, end quote. Will Smith and you too were Fallon's guests, along with many cameos, including Robert De Niro, Joan Rivers, Kim Kardashian, my personal favorite, Mariah Carey, and Fallon's Saturday Night Live co-host Tina Fey. Next week's guests include Mike Tyson and Paul Rudd. That's all for your entertainment news. I'm Isabella. And I'm Sarah. Now back to you at the desk. Sarah, thank you. Isabella, thank you as well. John, what does it mean when you have bobcats, bulldogs, and bears? Sounds like quite a zoo you got there. Well, it's not the zoo, but it's a weekend of ECAC ice hockey. And after the break, we'll bring in Nikki Barrett to discuss that and a whole lot more. Well, that next. Stay with us. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. Welcome back to the Q30 Newscast. I'm Mark Spillane. While the town of Hamden focuses on Quinnipiac athletics, the majority of the world's attention is pointed towards Sochi, Russia, the site of the current Winter Olympic Games. With just four days remaining in the Games, the action is heating up and the medal count is a close one. The United States currently leads with 23 medals just ahead of the Netherlands and host nation Russia, who each have 22. Norway leads the gold medal count with nine, while the United States has seven. Well, the men's ice hockey team remains the national focus here at Quinnipiac, John. Well, the men's basketball team, and that action is heating up as well as the MAC playoffs approach us. Well, let's discuss all that, and to do that, we're going to bring in Nikki Barrett. Nikki, welcome. Thank you, boys. Um, the men's ice hockey team traveled to play games versus Yale and Brown this past weekend. On Friday night, the Bobcats topped cross-county rival Yale 4 to nothing. QU's goalie Michael Gartig stopped all 33 Bulldog shots for his fifth shutout of the season. Saturday's game was not as easy for the Quinnipiac Bobcats as the Brown Bears defeated the Bobcats 4-2. QU gets back on the ice this weekend as they host Cornell Friday night and Colgate on Saturday. Meanwhile, the Quinnipiac men's basketball team has won five games in a row following three more wins last week versus Marist, Fairfield, and St. Peter's. The winning streak has pushed the Bobcats record to 12-4, good for a second-place tie in the MAC. The Bobcats get back on the court to play two of the remaining four contests at Canisius on Thursday night before traveling to face Niagara on Saturday. 
Quinnipiac's own women's ice hockey player Erica Uden Johansson is making her mark in so Sochi, Russia at the 2014 Winter Olympics. She is donning a yellow jersey, but this time it's not a bobcat, but the three Swedish crowns. This past Monday at the semifinals team, Sweden fell to the United States 6-1, losing all hope for a gold medal. Yet Sweden still has a chance this Thursday to win a bronze medal when the team faces Switzerland. The game will air live at 7 a.m. local time. Nikki, thank you very much. Thank you John, very much. That's going to do it for this week's newscast. Yes, that is, but we'll be back next week, same time, same place. Stay updated all week long by following us on Facebook and Twitter at Q30 News and by visiting our website at Q30Television.com. For Mark Spillane, Nikki Barrett, I'm John Alba. Good night, everyone.